Hello everyone, welcome to our post-operative guide video for gingival grafting. So, what should you expect in the first 24 hours? Regarding pain, the amount of pain that you feel after the graft has a lot to do with the size and the type of graft used. Free gingival grafts and connective tissue grafts tend to hurt a little bit more than cadaver grafts because of the additional wound where the graft was harvested. If this pain increases significantly a few days, between three and seven, after the grafting procedure, please call the office for instructions. We want to make sure that you don't have a post-operative infection. Regarding bleeding, you're going to bleed for the first 24 hours after surgery. This is completely normal. Keep in mind that when blood mixes with saliva, it may appear as if you're bleeding more than you actually are. Don't sweat it if you're still bleeding a little bit when you go to bed. Just put a towel over your pillow and get a little shut-eye. Regarding swelling, you're probably going to experience some degree of swelling after this type of surgery. The amount of swelling that you have is dependent on the size of the gingival graft performed. The swelling is usually greatest in the first four days and should start to decrease by days seven to ten. If this swelling significantly increases a few days between three and seven after the surgery, please our, give our office a call because we want to make sure that you don't have a post-op infection. Regarding sutures, if sutures were placed directly after surgery, and more than likely they were, you might feel them with your tongue. Do your best to avoid these little guys, because messing with them is ultimately going to um, negatively affect the healing of your graft. Let's talk about some strict no-can-do's for gingival grafting. Number one, do not pull on your lip or look at the surgical site for, for, for at least two weeks after the procedure was performed. Number two, do not rinse with anything for the first 24 hours after surgery. Number three, do not spit, suck through a straw, or touch the surgical site for the first two weeks. Number four, do not rub or apply excess pressure to your face to massage the area where the graft was performed. Remember, this thing does best when it doesn't move. Number five, do not smoke or drink alcohol for the first three days after surgery, and it is in your best interest to completely quit smoking altogether. Number six, do not exercise, mow the lawn, vacuum the house, or play any sports for the first five days after surgery. These activities tend to increase the risk of bleeding. For the first 24 hours, at a bare minimum, you should be a couch potato. Number seven, do not eat or drink hot foods or beverages. Remember, warm is okay, but do this, we recommend avoiding anything hot for the first seven days after surgery. And remember, the first 24 hours, keep it strictly cold. Number eight, do not consume spicy foods, chips, popcorn, carbonated drinks, or acidic juices like orange or grapefruit juice for the first 14 days after surgery. All right, so what are these, some things that you can do to help improve your healing? Cold packs. So as you leave the office and when you arrive home, you're going to use a cold pack on your face next to the surgical site to keep the swelling down. Keep this cold pack on for 20 minutes and then off for 20 minutes, and you can repeat this cycle for the first 36 hours after surgery. Regarding medications, take all the medications given or prescribed as directed. You may have started some of them the day before surgery. Take these medications with food unless stated otherwise, and if you want to make one exception to it, you can avoid taking narcotic type pain medications. That is completely fine with us. Regarding your oral hygiene, do not rinse your mouth for the first 24 hours. Do not brush or floss the grafted area for the first two weeks after surgery. However, please continue your normal oral hygiene routine throughout the rest of your mouth. Avoid the use of a water pick or water flossing devices because these are traumatic to the healing process. When rinsing with your prescription mouthwash, Listerine, or warm salt water, this will help clean the area. So in order to make this rinse, simply mix one teaspoon of salt water with a half glass of warm water, remember not hot. I caution you, do not rinse vigorously. This is a bad idea. Instead, just put this mouthwash in your mouth and then gently rock your head from side to side, bathing the surgical site in this mouth rinse. If you have a powdle stent, so sometimes a plastic retainer, which we call a powdle stent, is made to protect the roof of your mouth for the first seven days after surgery. If we gave you a stent, please wear it as often as possible for the first seven days. You can eat food and drink fluids with it in place, just be sure to rinse it afterwards. Regarding your diet, most of our patients find it difficult to sit down and eat a normal meal after dental surgery, and it's not difficult to see why, because chewing or chomping on the surgical site will aggravate it and could result in pain. Well, it probably will. It can also result in opening the surgical site, 
which leads to potential infections and healing complications. So we suggest you eat soft foods, take smaller bites, and chew only in the areas where surgery was not performed, and wear your palatal stent for the first seven days. That's definitely going to help avoid any trauma to at least the roof of your mouth. So avoid highly seasoned foods and completely, chew it, uh, and completely avoid chewing anywhere where the graft was performed. It's important to maintain a nutritious diet while you heal. Patients who maintain healthy diets of soft foods generally heal better, have less discomfort, and heal faster. Make sure you're taking a multivitamin after the procedure. It's great to have a healthy, balanced diet, but all too often, it's not enough. A lot of Americans walk around with vitamin deficiencies that they are probably unaware of, and this could negatively affect how you heal. So it's our recommendation that you take a high-quality multivitamin that includes vitamin D. So for days 2 through 14, what should you be expecting now? From a pain perspective, quite often the second, the second day can actually be worse than the first, but hang in there, you're going to get through it. Pain is usually the worst for the first three days and should be gone by 10 to 14 days after surgery. If there's an increase in pain or swelling, a few days between three and seven days after the procedure, please call our office for instructions. Regarding bleeding, you may still have a little bit of bleeding from the surgical site. This should mainly be in the form of oozing and its appearance should be pink because it's mixing with your saliva. Now, with gingival grafting, sometimes spontaneous bleeding can occur on the roof of your mouth up to seven days later. And this is likely the result of trauma to the area or if you decided to bend over or work out too soon. If this happens, simply apply firm pressure with your damp gauze for 10 minutes to the roof of your mouth. And if it still doesn't resolve the bleeding, call our office, we'll take care of it. Regarding swelling, you may experience additional swelling from what you saw in the first 24 hours. This swelling may continue to get worse by the second day. It should level off by day three and slowly decrease by days four and five. If you see an increase in swelling that's significant a few days between three and seven after surgery, please call our office for instructions. We wanna make sure that you don't have some form of post-op infection. Regarding bruising, the development of a black, blue, green, or even yellow discoloration on the outside of your face is the result of blood spreading and pooling underneath your tissues. It's quite normal for a bruise to form in the first two to three days after surgery. The size and length of time that you have this bruise will be directly related to the size and complexity of the graft procedure. Most of these bruises go away in seven days. However, some may persist up to 14 days and longer after surgery. This a lot of times has to do, again, with the type of surgery performed. And if you're a patient who bleeds more easily, you'll probably get a you're probably gonna bruise a little bit more. So what are some things you can do at this point in time to improve your healing? Warm packs. So after the first 24 to 36 hours, your cold packs can be switched to warm packs, although this is not required. Gentle pressure is all you need, just make sure it's not hot. Regarding your oral hygiene, please continue to avoid brushing the grafted area until your two-week post-operative appointment in our office. Regarding your palatal stent, this stent can be used for up to 14 days after surgery, but it's not required after seven days. Regarding your diet, your diet after the first 24 hours is gonna be slightly different than the first 24 hours, mainly in temperature. Remember, the first 24 hours is cold, after that it's warm. And as a rule of thumb, if you can't pinch through it, you probably shouldn't be eating it. We suggest that you continue to eat soft foods and take smaller bites, and then completely avoid chewing anywhere near the graft was performed. Continue taking your multivitamin supplement and make sure that it has vitamin D in it. Okay, days 15 and on, what should you expect? From a pain and swelling perspective, you should, no longer be any, you should no longer be experiencing any major pain by the third week of healing. If you do feel an increase in pain or swelling, give our office a call to discuss your symptoms. We wanna make sure that you don't have a post-op infection. Regarding your sutures, if resorbable sutures were used, they will probably be dissolved by now. If non-dissolving or non-resorbable sutures were used, they will likely be removed at your two-week post-operative appointment, but sometimes we leave them in longer and we'll let you know if that's the case with you. If you feel a suture might still be present after the sutures were supposed to be removed, please give our office a call to make sure that we had not left one in place. Things you should avoid. Continue avoid using your water pick close to the surgical site for the first month after surgery. Continue to avoid rubbing or applying excess pressure to your face to massage the area where the graft was performed. Remember, grafts heal best when they're not moving. And this should be maintained for a duration of three months after the procedure was performed. Things that you should do. 
regarding your oral hygiene. By the second week, you should feel pretty close to your old self and hopefully better. Discontinue using the prescription mouth rinse that is no longer needed. After your two-week post-operative appointment, you'll be using a roll brush technique that you'll see a video on next. And this is going to be done for the first six weeks after surgery. Make sure you use a manual, extremely soft toothbrush, and these should be provided to you by our office. As far as your diet is concerned, make sure that you continue to take smaller bites and avoid chewing on anywhere the grafting was performed. The most important recommendation we can make is to avoid chewing where surgery was performed for at least two months. If surgery was performed on both sides, make sure that you're following a strictly soft food diet and these recommendations were provided in days 2 through 14. Continue taking a multivitamin supplement, and if it doesn't have vitamin D in it, make sure you supplement that as well. So, what's next? Your final evaluation. We may ask you to return to our office after two to four months of healing. Now, the purpose of this appointment is to make sure that the graft turned out the way that it was supposed to. Sometimes, we need to perform gingival grafting procedures in two stages. If we plan to do a two-stage graft procedure with you, we will evaluate the healing of that graft at your two-month follow-up and then plan the second stage surgery after that. Okay, so that sums up this post-operative video. Hopefully it gave you all the information that you needed to heal correctly. Um, and yeah, I wish you a swift and fast recovery. We'll see you at your post-op.